Hi, it's Robert Young. Uh, this is actually the first attempt at a video uh, to try to provide uh, more uh, timely information to you, especially if uh, markets are in flux uh, during a day. I want to get a video out to you. But I'm going to take advantage of using this one to do our, spot, our stock spotlight this month, and that's going to be on Aveo. That's the uh, company that has produced the cancer drug for a specific type of kidney cancer that, that we are invested in. So I want to kind of take you back uh, how we found this drug uh, company, where it is today, and what I see it going into the future. So this drug, uh, this company was brought to me by one of our analysts who had researched it. it had, uh, it's for sale in Europe and Asia. It was going through testing, trial testing, before it applied for its NDA, its uh, new drug application to the FDA. It had just completed phase two of its testing, it was going to go for phase three. Uh, he had done his research, and so he came to me, and I did some additional research. I contacted the company, and we picked it up essentially for about two dollars a share. Keep that in mind. Expectation was it would get through FDA approval, probably go to five dollars a share, double our money. Then they finished with phase three testing. The results were better than expected. Analysts who followed that stock came back and they revised their recommendation to a buy to a strong buy. And they all said, we think this is a seven to ten dollar stock. Okay. So I was at first thinking we just double our money, but now I'm thinking we'll quadruple or quintuple our money. Quintuple. Quintuple our money. Then on 31 January. After third phase testing had been completed, uh, the president of the company went to the FDA and sat down with them and essentially had a dialogue and said, here's our data, what do you think? Should we proceed with our NDA, new drug application? And they said, you know what, you haven't quite proven the long-term effects. So here, I'm going to read the report really quickly. FDA uh, looked at the preliminary overall survival results, the OS results, and that's long-term uh, from phase three testing, and they said that the results do not uh, s uh, satisfy their concerns about comp uh, potential long-term effects of the drug. So they recommended that Aveo not file for an FDA uh, approval uh, right now. So the expectation was that, uh, and our two dollars had grown to three, and then back and up and down, but because this this stock is traded by a lot of people, but it's invested by a very few, and we're one of the investors. So that being said, uh, the stock plummeted. Quite frankly, uh, if you can see this, it is 60 cents. That is what the stock plummeted down to and sort of sits around today. So our $2 investment lost about 70% of its value, and it is now sitting around 60, uh, 60 cents a share. Now, uh, what do you think the first thing I did was when I got home? Yes. Okay. To be honest, 70% loss of a stock, regardless of how you feel about the company, takes a little bit of courage to get back on the saddle in the next morning. All right. So now you know how Robert handles stress when he gets home. A couple of cocktails, back in the saddle in the morning. Here we go. So what did I do second? Well, the next morning, uh, read the uh, pronouncement by the company, uh, realized that a lot of selling had been done by people who really are not truly invested in the company. They're very short-term people. They want to see it go up a couple bucks, and they'll sell their 100,000-plus shares, and they'll you know, take their 100 or 200 grand, and then they'll walk away, and they'll wait for it to drop down again and buy it again. And that's essentially what happened. A lot of people just sold out, uh, took their profits or whatever, and they walked away. Well, that's fine. We don't need them right now anyway. Because then we had to ask ourselves a second question after I contacted the company. What has changed about the company? Well, phase three testing came back. People on the drug lived 44% longer. In addition to that, the cancer progression was reduced by 26%. That's significant. It outperforms the, it's it's peer in this arena by twice as much. It is twice as effective 
as the drug that's already out there by Bayer. All right, that's great. The analysts that follow this did not adjust their seven to nine dollar range. They did pull back and say, it's not a buy right now, hold on to it. But they're looking at it because all the uh, FDA said was, why don't you just wait a few more months, get us some survival data that's longer term, specifically August, and then come back and we'll discuss it. Okay, fine. We'll, we'll hang out for six more months because I'll tell you what's also happened. I can't give you the screenshot. I'm going to attach it, but I want, I'm going to highlight the dates that people inside the company were buying the stock and I'm going to highlight the price. All you see, if you look at this screenshot from the SEC, are, and this is from the 21st of December, and I'll give you the, the history, previous couple of months history. All you see are insiders buying huge blocks. And this, remember, was prior to their meeting on 31 January. Also what happened in December was uh, Aveo reached out to the American Society of Clinical Oncology uh, which is a, a respected gathering of oncologists that are meeting on the 14th and 15th, and they asked to present the results. This uh, association reviewed the results, vetted these people, and said, we think this is something you should actually present. They said they qualified them to present them, this information. They are scheduled on the 14th and 15th of this month to make their presentation. So you have insider buying. In addition to that, I'm going to show you this. These are institutional holders of it. All right, what do you see? If you can read this, you see Vanguard, you see BlackRock, right? You see State Street, Northern Trust. These are not fly-by-night position holders. If you look at big position holders of individuals, you've got the directors, the CEO, and uh, major investors in the company. Oh, here's Robert Young down here. Oh, can't see it. There we are. Robert Young. Yes, that's us. So we are invested in the company. Remember, nothing has changed other than the need for a bit more data. So what else is going on? All right. Um, to, to, to cash flow. Cash flow is strong. The drug has been approved for the last five years in Asia and in Europe and continues to be used. As a matter of fact, not only is it a primary uh, drug against uh, the specific cancer, but they're also finding that coupled with another drug, it actually uh, enhances the other drug. So there is a secondary market or secondary use of this drug as an enhancer. Now, most of this is fairly technical and frankly, they have to really dumb it down because that's what you get when you get a criminal science degree as your major. But regardless, I get the concept. All right, so we have analysts have not downgraded it. They've said, hold it, wait. We have insider buying that you'll be attached to your, that's a screen over there, maybe attached to your email. I want you to really take a look and see who's buying, how much they're buying, the price they are buying at, and the dates that they bought. If you really notice, a lot was bought in December with the expectation this was probably gonna be filed in January or February. So I assure you, for these people, it was just as much a surprise as it was for us. And certainly, 2 to 60 is a heck of a surprise, a surprise worth this. But here's what I believe the possible outcomes are going to be. I believe that uh, one of two things will occur. Well, three things. One. I believe that the drug will uh, go through the FDA approval, but it probably will not go through until the probably file in the fourth quarter of this year. It'll take a year for it to go through. So 2020 instead of 2019. All right, well, fine. We'll wait to double our money or quadruple it in 24 months instead of 18. On top of that, uh, I believe that there could be a forced sale. Um, it could very well uh, have to merge with another company like a Bayer or a Pfizer or whomever uh, and maybe we double our money that way. Uh, the third thing is it, it does go through its testing, it, it just gets delayed and then we see the, our, the benefits of waiting 
and hanging in there and investing in a company then. And at that point, when one of those three things is going to occur. Now, you, somebody's in the background saying, well, there could be a fourth thing. They could not get the approval and it could go under. No, no, no. Stop that negative vibe, man. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to wait. We're going to sit on it. It does not make us any money. Unfortunately, it does not pay us a dividend. But we are invested in this company. Uh, most of you, not heavily, but enough that it will help your account balances. Uh, I will tell you personally, uh, I'm invested very heavily. And uh, it, it's one of those things where I had to get a couple of these cocktails and maybe uh, and then tell Shelly, who just looked at me and said, yeah, all right, we're good. Because we have a track record and it is going to work out. Uh, I promise the next time I give you an update, well, I'll give you more updates in the Aveo, but one day I'm going to give you an update and all I'm going to do is turn the camera on and say Aveo and pop a bottle of champagne and you're going to know. Thank you so much. Have a great day and uh, I'll have the February newsletter out very shortly.